I never forget this, I'm driving down Highway 80 up in Northern California. This was like in the mid to late 80s. E30 M3 blew right by me on the freeway. And I always thought, ah, that E30 M3 is just the most fabulous car. We never had a lot of money growing up. When I was 17, I was homeless. So I didn't have the means to buy one of those. Um, starting from that and ending up where I'm at, I feel like a pretty lucky guy. So yeah, I can say it's having this car collection is like an American dream to be in this position, I'd say yes. You know? The collection basically comprises of about 45 cars, 55 total with parts cars and everything else to support the collection. And it spans anywhere from 1960, every basic model through 1988. It's a good cross section of cars, you know. Why I collect those, because I always think of cars I want to drive and in different situations. So I end up with just about everything I could possibly want to drive. I've always loved to collect little things that intrigue me. So I collected art for a long time. You know, there's art around making something mechanical like that work, and that's what really drives me in the hobby. We talk a lot about the cars, but one of the aspects of the hobby that so intrigues me is finding those little bits and those little parts that are so hard to find, you know, and collecting those. I'm more hooked on the treasure hunt than I am on just having it sitting on a shelf, obviously. That's what kind of keeps you going. It's the people, it's the cars, it's just kind of everything about the whole activity that, that feeds on itself, you know? His soul is BMW, I believe. We all make fun of him and say it's a disease. Yeah, but it's a passion of his. My shop manager, he's like my little brother, you know? He's here full time and he, he manages the collection. And So when we look at restoration now, we're not looking so much at restoration as we're looking at preservation. It's like, almost like an archeological find, you know, when you find the right car with all the right parts, it hasn't been molested. Because think about BMW is always performance driven. So everybody wants to take the car and put performance parts on them and change the car the way it was originally built. The first vintage BMW I purchased was a 1600. It had all the original bits on the car. And I, I went through the car, had it totally restored, I put a bigger motor in it, did the things that a lot of folks do to these cars to make them more performance oriented. And from the day I got the car back, it's a fantastic car. I love the car, it's in my collection still today, but I always regretted removing all the special little bits the 1600 has. And since then, I have always had such a hard time finding an all original example. And when I found this, it was just, to me, it's like the holy grail. It's like, it's very unique to find these in this condition. Even original steel wheels and hubcaps. I mean, this thing is really a fantastic survivor car. Well, we're gonna preserve it. We're going to drop the engine, transmission, subframe all down at once, put everything 100% mechanically sound, put it together, make a driver out of it. I know how I am, uh, what car I had when my son was born. I know when I was a kid and my uncle took me to school, you know, riding in the car. I get those emotional experiences or those experiences in general that were good times for you, of course. So um, I don't want to be seen because I'm not, a, I'm not like that, I'm not a per public persona per se. I don't make my living in the car business and I don't, uh, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm embarrassed, I'm not a show off, I guess. And I'm not saying people that show their cars are show offs, I'm just saying I don't feel, that's not why I do it. The 700 RS number one car of two built, hand built, uh, in 1961. This car was no stranger to winning races, Hans Stuck won his final hill climb championship in this car. Just an amazing car, just an amalgamation of, of uh, great BMW history there. It's almost like I'm the caretaker for the car. I'm very proud to own that in the collection. It's a very, very, very special car. We keep all the original keychains to the cars, like for instance, this keychain here, um, you know, the RS number one keychain. You know, each keychain has a story behind it, behind the owner and what they did and where they were. Cars are honest, they are what they are, you know. 
and I close the door and then I can come in here, I can sort parts or I can go through what I want to go through and someone's not knocking at my door. That's big for me. Once you're hooked, it's hard to stop. I mean, it's, it's, it's really difficult to stop. So, am I crazy? No. <laughs> I buy the cars because I want to enjoy the cars not just from a visual perspective, but also from enjoying driving them. There are millions of BMW stories. What's yours?